Imagine all of your students are working together, focused and on task. That is the dream when teaching a student with ADHD in the inclusive classroom. Is it possible? So glad you asked. Let's chat about inclusive strategies for ADHD in the classroom. Hi there teachers, Marian Busfield here from Engaging Curiosity to empower you to take charge in the classroom by supporting you with evidence-based classroom management strategies and resources. Classroom management is often overwhelming at the beginning, but with the right strategies and resources, you will master the classroom behavior and pave the way for dynamic instruction. I am a faith-led, married, mother of two, grandmother to one, outdoor enthusiast, and retired teacher. My passion is to share what I know about teaching to support this wonderful new generation of teachers. Videos will include topics on my five pillars of classroom management, which are building classroom community, classroom expectations, differentiation and in instruction, social emotional learning, and classroom organization. Look down below and find the link to download my free classroom management checklist. Inside the checklist, you will find my five pillars of classroom management broken down into steps you can take one at a time. A goal setting page is included to help you get organized and prioritized with the needs for your unique classroom. Download the checklist now and set your goals today. I appreciate you sharing your time with me today. Let's dig in. Classroom. Before I can... Building classroom community and having an inclusive classroom philosophy is an essential part of successfully knowing how to manage ADHD behavior in the classroom. When your classroom management philosophy is inclusive, then you are able to perceive the unique needs of each student, including students with ADHD in the classroom. Then you are able to celebrate the diversity of students with ADHD in the class the inclusive classroom and within the classroom and other types of student diversity too. You, the teacher, are well on the way to creating inclusive strategies for ADHD in the classroom, an environment in which every student can thrive. A growth mindset and inclusive strategies for ADHD in the classroom uh, include all sorts of things. It is most easily accomplished if the teacher sees ADHD as a difference rather than a deficit which is why I mentioned the importance of classroom management philosophy. ADHD inclusion strategies by nature include accommodating various learning styles and would also include differentiation and personalized support where possible or necessary. These accommodations ensure that students with ADHD in the inclusive classroom and others receive the tools they need to succeed. By creating this environment the teacher has cultivated, a culture of understanding and empathy among all students, which also benefits all students. This creates an enriched and educational experience for everyone. These practices align with the concept of universal design for learning or UDL. So exploring UDL principles is essential to the success of supporting ADHD in the classroom. Recognizing and accommodating diverse learning styles is key. UDL embraces the concept of differentiation by stimulating student engagement and motivation, presenting information and content in multiple ways, providing options for students to represent their learning. When planning with UDL in mind, the teacher is supporting all the students in their learning journey. Multiple means of sharing information means teachers are also supporting the various attention spans of all the students. This nurtures engagement and understanding between students. UDL is a powerful strategy to create classrooms that accommodate students with neurodiversity and also those without. All students will thrive. So how to help ADHD students, ADHD students with inclusive strategies for ADHD in the classroom? It is no secret that one of the biggest challenges of managing ADHD in the classroom is the limited attention span of some of your students. The positive impact of engaging students through their personal learning process is that their attention spans are captured and focus is maintained. Include a mix of interactive activities, multimedia presentations, and hands-on experiences in your instruction. This will help you to recognize the different strengths and talents of all the students, which is an inclusion strategy for ADHD students. The teacher is rewarded for the extra initial work, but in the long term, this approach is encouraging to the teacher. Engagement is key to unlocking the potential of every student. Incorporating inclusion strategies for ADHD students creates a positive and supportive educational experience for all. Providing multiple modes of assessment as a part of your inclusive strategies for ADHD in the classroom uh, is important. 
There are many ways teachers may choose to import in, incorporate inclusive strategies for ADHD in the classroom. Some examples would include project-based assessments, allow for verbal responses, or provide alternatives to written assignments. Although this is nowhere to being a comprehensive list. But by providing these and other opportunities for students to share their understanding, you are providing a more inclusive education for ADHD students and others. I believe so strongly in differentiation and universal design for learning, that, but differentiation is one of my pillars of classroom management. Before I continue, a reminder to use the link down below to download the free classroom management checklist. Once you have shared your email address, you will receive links to my weekly email with classroom tips and links to my blog and video resources. Adapting curriculum materials means including visual aids, example videos, pictures, games, and other visual activities like color by code. Also interactive content, example movement-based learning activities, hands-on activities, digital games, and of course, organizational structures. There are many examples of organizational structures for written assignments, bullet points and numbering, headings and subheadings, color coding, graphic organizers, checklists, consistent formatting. By using organizational structures, teachers create an opportunity for students with ADHD more, to more effectively process and engage with the content. And this creates a more supportive and inclusive learning experience and builds a safer, more inclusive education for ADHD students. But you can see that those strategies would work for all your students. Simply put, differentiation and universal design for learning, learning working together work. Flexible seating arrangements is a powerful inclusive strategy for ADHD in the classroom. So what is flexible seating? For the purpose of this post, I am referring to flexible seating as a choice of seating options within the classroom. For example, in my classroom, there were desks, a couch, a large comfy chair, a carpet, and cubbies. However, another way of the, applying the term flexible seating is to refer to non-assigned seats. And finally, flexible seating includes ways to arrange seating. Whew! I use the term flexible seating to return to different types of seating and at times my students choose their own seating arrangement when using couches and cubbies, etc. When my students are listening to me instruct and for certain other activities, they are sitting or standing at their assigned seat. At other times they have options for, for types of seating, partners and positions, standing, sitting or lying down. By combining the two, I also address the questions that arise in some of the research. Because of the diverse attention and learning styles of ADHD, flexible options are important, or even not seating arrangements. In my class, I allowed students to stand during carpet time, at the back during the instruction or at the counter when working. These options were a part of my flexible seating in my ADHD inclusive classroom. Standing desks aren't for everyone, and they are certainly not a panacea for all student behavior. But the students in my class who took advantage of this option did so consistently throughout the year. So what are some of the advantages of flexible seating? Well, flexible seating allows students to choose where and how they sit or stand. It can make a big difference in engagement for many students, including students with ADHD. And this impacts the learning environment, a core principle of differentiation. Students can choose a standing desk, comfy chair, quiet corner, whatever suits their needs in that moment. I always had two quiet desks at the beginning of the year. These were not calm down desks. They were just an opportunity to work removed from distraction. Because students can perceive these types of desks as a place they are sent when they have misbehaved, I definitely need to sell them in a way that clarified that the desks were there as a support, not a consequence. I must have been successful. By the end of the year, I was regularly getting requests from about five to eight students to sit at a quiet desk. When implemented correctly, standing desks are options for inclusion strategies for ADHD students too. I mean, how much work is it to change a quiet desk from a consequence for poor behavior to a tool for teaching students to self-regulate and focus and feel the pride of that growth and achievement? Not much really. Different seating and standing options acknowledge and support diverse learning preferences. Focus and attention improve and a more positive and empowering learning environment is created. So next up is integrating technology for personalized learning. Technology can be a powerful tool for catering to the unique strengths and challenges associated with ADHD, but it must be used wisely and with an awareness of the downside. Definitely, it can be used as an organizational tool for supporting students with ADHD in the classroom with things like timers, 
and this is not, I do not have an affiliate link for that and checklists. However, there's more than that too. When offering personal, personalized learning platforms, oftentimes there is adaptive software and interactive options. Technology is a teacher's friend. I am not suggesting an online course here. Technology is used differently for different students and for parts of the day and parts of the information shared. It is not used for the entire instruction of the student. However, multimedia content and interactive activities can increase engagement and comprehension. So integrating inclusive strategies for ADHD in the classroom, depending on what program is being used, can be used to meet individual learning styles and paces, which is part of differentiation. In my class, one of our programs was a free math resource called Splash Learn. Again, not an affiliate link. I had the freedom to target individual schools each student needed to work on. The students loved it, and every Friday, when the students were pretty much wiped out from a busy week at school, math was when my students rotated between a third block math journal, a third block on the computer, and a third block with versatiles, and again, not an affiliate link. Computer time was definitely alone, but versatiles could be alone or with friends. Journals are definitely alone. These three simple effective activities that incorporated so many, incorporated so many different principles of differentiation and inclusion and required little to no prep other than determining the skills to be worked on. However, it was an effective use of instructional time, was well differentiated, incorporate, engaging, incorporated technology, and all the kiddos loved it, which is the UDL part. Inclusive strategies for ADHD in the classroom and UDL make sound like a lot of things. Confusing, overwhelming, demanding, or rewarding, fulfilling, and inspiring. Although I'm not in the classroom anymore, I am still connected with the classroom as my husband is still teaching. I'm very much aware of the challenges in the classroom. I do not want to minimize the difficulties that teachers are facing and the changes that have occurred in our culture over time. I also know that incorporating inclusive strategies for ADHD in the classroom might be time consuming to get off the ground, but you don't need to do it all at once. Be gentle and patient with yourself and your students as you develop your inclusive strategies for ADHD in the classroom. Thank you so much for joining me. Check out the links below and I hope to see you again soon. Bye now. I appreciate you sharing your time with me today and I hope you join me again soon. Take steps to calm the classroom chaos one step at a time. Please remember to use the link down below to uh, my free classroom management checklist. See you soon.